Hi, it's Mike with AskTractorMike.com. Got a viewer letter today basically asking, what's the best brand and model of tractor for slopes? And we're going to try to answer that question today, but I really need your assistance. If you've got some experience with this topic, please put it in the comments down below. Let's get to the letter. Letter comes today from Mark, and Mark says, Hello, I'm interested in a Mahindra 1635 or 2638 but I'm concerned about how it may handle the hills around my house. I have a fairly steep gravel drive that requires routine maintenance and a hilly pasture for horses that will require a rotary cutter. I know the basic safety procedures, such as don't side hill, but my concern is whether or not they'll have enough horsepower and weight to not spin out in my driveway towards the crest of the hill while using a box blade or the availability to go up and downhill with the cutter going. I'm willing to consider other makes, models, and horsepower ranges, depending on what you believe would be the safest option, while also getting the most availability of features. Mark. Well, Mark, I don't think you're going to have a problem going up and down hills if you get the right attachments for the tractor. If you've got a 30 horsepower tractor with an 84 inch box blade, that could be a problem or if you're going up and down hills with a rotary cutter and you're trying to mow weeds above the top of the tractor, you could starve for a horsepower. But if you match the implement in the back of the tractor, like a bush hog or box blade, to the size of the tractor, I think you'll be fine. And remember, when you're looking at the requirements of the rotary cutter, look at PTO horsepower of the tractor and the rotary cutter versus engine horsepower. So I don't think that's going to be a problem, but the problem exists when you want to go on a side hill. And eventually, you'll probably want to do that because we all do it. And I'll give you a statistic about how dangerous side hills are. Farming is always the most or the second most dangerous occupation. And 80% of farming accidents involve machinery. 75% of those involve tractors and 60% of those involve tractor rollover. So it's real smart to be concerned about rolling over a tractor. And having said that, if you have your seat belt fastened and your roll bar up, most of the time you're gonna survive a tractor rollover, but we don't even wanna risk a tractor rollover. So the next thing I'm gonna tell you is I don't think there's any specs that exist that can tell you which brand and models of tractors are gonna be better on hills. But I can give you five different options or features of a tractor that can dictate how well that tractor is gonna handle the side hill. And three of those kind of involve tires and two of those involve the design of the tractor. So let's get to number one. The first thing you're gonna look at is how high is the tractor? Center of gravity. And the number one thing to look at is the rim diameter. The taller the rim, the higher the center of gravity of the tractor, the greater the chance of rollover. Now on most small tractors, and the two that Mark mentioned, they only come one way. They come with 24 inch rims and that's pretty standard. You get up to a utility tractor or mid-range or larger tractor, you're gonna have different options. When my dad was shopping for a tractor to use on our orchard, he wanted it as low as possible. And so he got the 24 inch rims on a 60 horse tractor. And most of the tractors that size had 28 inch or 30 inch rims. So it put it lower to the ground. And the reason we did that was not because of slopes, but to get under the apple trees. And so on the bigger tractors, utility on up, you have an option there. And you may have to wait for it to get built, but get the lowest rim you can. Now, the second thing we want to look at is, can you change the width of the tires? Because the wider the tires are spaced apart, the more stable the tractor is going to be. On a lot of small tractors, you have no options other than if you switch the sides of the tires and wheels. You'll notice that there's a dish on every rim. And most of the time, tractors ship from the factory at their narrowest tread setting. So if you swap the sides of those tires and wheels, you'll get a wider stance and you'll have more stability. Now that's not what we're really looking for if you're on extreme hills. What we're really looking for there is where the center section is bolted to the rim. And if you've got that, you have multiple tread settings. You can put the dish the furthest out and then bolt it to the widest possible place on the inside of the rim 
and you can get a wide, wide tread setting. And the tires will actually probably be out way past the fenders. Now, the advantages of that, you'll be really stable on hills, but the disadvantage is if you ever need to haul the tractor, it may be tough to load on the trailer. So that's the next thing you want to look at. Number, number two is how the rims bolt to the center sections. The number three thing you want to look at is can I add additional ballast to the tractor past fluid in the tires? If you're on any slope at all, or if you're using a front end loader, I highly recommend you get fluid in the tires, a non-caustic substance that any tire company that services uh, farm tires can add, or you can have added at the dealer before it leaves their lot. But they'll pump that tire about two thirds of the way full with a substance, a liquid of some kind, in the south, they just use water, but anywhere it freezes, you need something like an environmentally friendly, non-caustic fluid that goes in there, and they're on the market to add ballast and keep the tractor stable. But what if that's not enough? If it's not enough, well, you need center sections of your wheels that have holes pre-drilled in them for additional weight. And dealers either stock or have available these round weights that go inside the wheel and they, they run a bolt through there to bolt them on. And you can add almost an infinite number of weights. And I've seen them extend past the outside of the rim. But there are tractors that have center sections with no holes pre-drilled. And you don't want to go through the hassle of trying to locate and drill those holes out. So make sure those holes are there when you're shopping for a tractor. That's number three. Now, the number four thing to look for in a tractor for slopes is how the platform is mounted to the tractor. On some tractors, you're going to have a platform above the transmission that's completely flat. And that's really nice for getting on and off the tractor. And it's really nice when you're operating the tractor, having all that leg room there. The downside of it is that's moved you up higher and raised your center of gravity. If you're wanting the best tractor for slopes, get a straddle mount. And a straddle mount means when you get on the tractor, you're, you're moving your legs over the transmission to get on the tractor. But it also is much, much lower. Now, the other disadvantage of it is going to get heat from that transmission coming up at you all day long. So if you're running the tractor a long time, you may get more heat and noise from the tractor than you will with a platform mount. But you will be lower. Now, you can't option a tractor, you know, say, I want a straddle mount versus a platform on a particular model. Most of the tractors either come one way or the other. And usually the straddle mount will be the cheaper economy tractor. And you may not be able to get on, on a uh, tractor with a straddle mount the other options that you want. So that's a concern as well. And the fifth thing you can look for, and again, this is not an option. These tractors just come that way or they don't. is where the fuel tank is located. I prefer for hills, the fuel tank to be down below the operator area, and some tractors have them there. Disadvantage of that, that's where all the sticks are. If you're brush hogging uh, woody plants, they're gonna be, all the sticks are hitting the fuel tank, but most time they'll have a metal guard around it. But most tractors are gonna have the fuel tank up under the hood or right behind you, behind the operator area. And both of those are up high. And so you're adding fuel to the tractor that is not helping your center of gravity. So if you have a fuel tank that's down low, like this one is, uh, that's perfect. But again, you can't order that as an option. They come that way or they don't. So Mark, to get to the answer to your question, I really don't know. There's no data out there that tells you which tractors are gonna be more stable on slopes. Uh, so I'm inviting our viewers, if you've had experience, both good and bad with tractors and slopes and particular brands and models, Put it in the comments down below and then we'll all know about it. But to answer your question, I don't know where you can look at specs and find out which tractor is going to be better on a slope than another. It's something the manufacturers just don't seem to have or to publish. I appreciate you watching my videos. I would be honored if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can do that by clicking the mic face icon and make sure you check your bell so you get notified when I post future videos. Here's a link to my website and the Tractor Fun Store with cool things for sale for the tractor owner it helps support my channel. And here's another couple of videos you might want to watch, including one on ways to prevent rollovers. Thanks for watching.